Hi you guys, uh, hello and welcome. I just have a really toxic plant that I wanted to talk about because it's quite naturalized all over North America now. It's heavily invasive and it's just really not good for your health. So this over here is Bittersweet Nightshade. Uh, just a huge disclaimer, you never want to touch this plant with your hands. It's incredibly toxic. You never want to eat it and you especially don't want to eat the berries, especially the ripe berries of this plant. Uh, so it's in the Solanaceae family, the same family as tomatoes, or the nightshade family. Uh, this here is known as bittersweet nightshade, not to be confused with the deadly nightshade. Both of them are potentially deadly, but deadly nightshade is way worse, and that's uh, Atropa belladonna. That's a completely different plant with the same name. But this over here is the bittersweet nightshade. Uh, it produces these purple five-petaled potato-like flowers late into the summer. Uh, it's a trailing plant. It produces these semi-woody uh, stems. It's perennial in nature, long-lived, lives up to 15 years, and it creates these long vines that just twine around absolutely everything. Now, if you find this in the wild, avoid it at all costs. It's extremely toxic. Uh, it's quite good for our natural bird species as uh, they have an immunity to the toxins in this plant but for humans do not consume this plant you guys just a huge disclaimer do not even touch it with your hands it's that toxic it creates like sunburn type blisters and especially when it's in bloom so this over here is a natural bind which means that it wraps around things and climbs fences much like a vine and if you want to see this in the wild and identify it it's always uh, just trailing along huge structures. It has a spread of up to 15 feet. Uh, it blooms in clusters. The blooms themselves have a yellow center and five dark purple petals. The flowers uh, start producing these tiny little, they look almost like goji berries. They start off green and then they become red and then they become dark kind of eggplant purple colored. Especially avoid those you guys. Now another thing I will say is it's an incredibly uh, invasive plant. Uh, once you have this colonizing somewhere in your garden through rhizomatous roots and adventitious roots, it'll completely take over. So be really mindful not to introduce this into your garden like I have. A <laughs> bad idea, you guys. Um, another characteristic I've noticed of this plant is see the way that it kind of um, zigzags back and forth when it grows up stuff? That's another good ID feature. Another interesting thing about this plant is in shady situations, on occasion it'll actually grow simple leaves without the five lobes. So this here is also what the plant looks like. Uh, this here is just what it looks like when it's first emerging out of its new terminal growth points. And I'll try to find an example if I encounter one that's actually fully grown with flowers and fruit on it. So this over here has several phytochemicals that lice your skin. Uh, it has several amino acids and stuff such as that that is just really detrimental to the health of your digestive system. If you consume this, it's really bad for your duodenum and lower intestine. Um, so just don't mess with this plant, you guys. I just really want to keep you guys careful from this plant. Uh, so if you have children, if you have pets, really avoid having this in its natural state even in your yard. Just try to completely eradicate it. Uh, it's native to northern Africa, it's native to Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and the Iberian Peninsula, so also Spain and Portugal. Uh, but it's naturalized pretty well all over the world. Much like uh, plants in the Euphorbiaceae family, it produces a little a white kind of cream-colored sap when you uh, cut the... Um, when you cut the vascular cambium of the stems. So you can't really see it there. I don't know, my lighting's a little bad today, but it's kind of like this white sap. And another indicative thing of this plant is that their stems are completely hollow. Uh, they have no pith whatsoever. And yeah, so don't even throw this in your compost, you guys. Just throw it in the trash. I know you should be mindful of where you put your trash and stuff, and I know it's biodegradable, but you don't want to um, expose anyone else to the toxicity of this plant. So that there is my little... PSA, I guess, of Solanum dulcamara, also known as Bittersweet Nightshade. And as I actually talk to you guys, this one's going into bloom. So they have these really compound, I don't know if you can see that against my finger, uh, bloom stalks, uh, born in groups of approximately 20. They're cymus in nature, in their structure. 
and each bloom blooms for approximately three days. So <laughs> just a heads up, I might make some more videos on toxic plants just because I find that a lot of people might find that interesting and it's just important to be aware so that you don't um, get harmed by these plants, right? Yeah. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching. Seriously, I can't stress this enough. If you have children or small pets, avoid this plant even if you're walking down the street because it's very toxic. It burns your skin. Always wear gloves. If you're going to prune it just to get rid of it coming over a fence or something, always sterilize your pruning equipment. Use rubbing alcohol or a sprayable hand sanitizer. And yeah, <laughs> that was kind of a long-winded video, but you know what? Just be safe. And aside from all toxic plants and everything, just in the world, just be safe, you guys, and have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching, and be sure to know what plant you are pruning or propagating before you do so, or at least a little bit about it, because a lot of common plants are very toxic. Uh, yeah, so have a good one. <laughs>